anyone have any questions or just argument they'd like to talk about in regards to the last meditation or meditation in general or anything at all? Questions about meditation or comments to bring up? Yeah. Yes, it's very natural and very normal, and it will. Yeah, um, just, I mean, from my personal experience, when I first started to meditate, quite a long time ago, first thing that began to happen is I couldn't stay awake. Could not, couldn't, no matter what I did, no matter how much coffee I just couldn't. So that lasted for a while, and then when I was uh, finally remained awake, then it was I was assailed by my thoughts, and my head was ex insanely loud, like just, and uh, that was freaky. That was really freaky. Um, it really, really surprised me. The, the amount of different sort of voices I was hearing in a way, like. And the thoughts would have voices and like conversations I would hear and things like that. Um, and I think what's per, uh, freaky for a lot of people is the until we bring our awareness to it, we don't really realize that that's actually what our heads are always going. We have just become so accustomed to it that we live with it and deal with it. And then when you start to shine your spotlight of awareness on it, then you notice. I mean, you can go through a period of time where you feel quite crazy. Yeah, and so just day to day to day, and there was a, t uh, a time when I I couldn't imagine that my I would, I would ever have a quiet head. I just thought it would never happen. And uh, eventually, there was a moment. And in that, and that one moment was so profound, it kept me going. Because it was such a relief, you know. So yeah, and then just eventually, yeah. No other questions. Yeah, just imagine, uh, you know, if you if you have a cluttered mind, imagine what it, life becomes like when it clears up. I mean, mm. Very, it's a very different experience between that and a clear mind. <laughs> all the difference and, and the difference that it makes has nothing to do with the outer details of your life. That's the, that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. Because the outer details of your life can just be a shit show or appear to be just great for a while. And you know, there's like, this, you know, and if we're, if we're trying to ride that roller coaster, good luck. But that's the whole idea is to pull off. That's the cure. And then you get to experience the roller coaster without mm -hmm. vomiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else got anything you want to say or ask or anything? <coughs> I'm just wondering how activism. Activism. Well, you were saying that we don't really have any control over what's going on around us, but we see. Things that are wrong. Yeah, like a whole fentanyl overdose. Or yes. Like so things that are that are that are yeah happening. That are so do we? Yeah. Is there a place to speak out? And oh yeah. Okay. Sure. No, that does that doesn't mean you you, you know, become a bump on, bump on a log. No. Okay. No. It just means that uh, your words will be coming from a different place. There's like a, there are different ways to have a relationship with the suffering that we see and the suffering that we, you know. So for instance, if you gain the ability to see that you're not your thoughts, 
and you gain the ability, like, let's just say you go through a period of time in your life um, where you struggled with being very ego egocentric, say, and then, you know, and most of us who, are, who have been egocentric and, or are egocentric don't really know it. And, and something happens and then we get a glimpse of it. And then we make a decision and we try to deal with it. And that can take a, a long time. And then if you get out on the other side of that, then it's um, easy for you to then see somebody else who's struggling with it. Because you conquered your own, and so then you don't uh, judge somebody for it. It's more like you have compassion for them, and then you can actually be of help. Because, because uh, for one, you're not judging, you've been through it. And as you're with them, you know that they're not their ego. They may not know that at the time, but you know that. So in a way, you see their enlightened self in a, in a way that they may not be able to see at that point. So, you know, in that, in the same way, if you understand like the nature of why anyone does anything or, or what compels someone to do something and you've dealt with that in your own life, then your presence is different. And then, and if you get in tune to your deeper self, then, I don't like using the word authentic, but uh, the choices that you make and, and the activity that you do or the activism that you do may be more closer to your heart and more closer to home and it may feel right. It may feel like I don't know why I'm I don't know why I'm here, but I, I am here and I'm doing this. And uh, yeah, we, we see things, we make choices, and those choices are based on the state of our heart. And what we get what we get to release about this whole control thing is that you're not you can't you know don't imagine that you can fix somebody. You know, don't imagine that you can stick your hand in there and just manipulate reality, someone else's reality. Um, but we can certainly be there, and we can certainly talk, and we can certainly do whatever it is that we decide that we're going to do. Like, uh, right now, uh, an example of that is right now I'm working at Pacifica. So Pacifica is a uh, place where people go when they're, when they're recovering from addiction. This is not something that I thought I would ever do. And uh, I, a good friend of mine, Didi, she, she had that position for six years, seven years, and she was leaving, and she just asked me if I wanted to do it. And I instantly got excited. No idea why. So I go down there, and I just, I just put myself there. Is that activism? I don't know. You see, I didn't feel like I went there to be an activist. I just showed up because something in my heart said yes. So you know, I didn't feel. I don't feel like I made a choice to go on some kind of campaign to save these people at Pacifica. I don't, I don't feel that I even can. I just, um, uh, I just show up there and so far, uh, the bull is the star of the show. I don't know, I just start ringing the bull and everyone's happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so like that. And so this whole fence, not like wherever you go, just be where you are. That's your activism. Wherever you go, be where you are. That's the most activism that, that you can bring. And the more present you become, the more active you become. You know, uh, another example. Uh, I sing at I sing at church. I'm, I'm and like I'm not I'm not a religious person. Okay, I'm like not. I'm I'm not even really Buddhist. I'm I'm not. I'm not a religious person. Uh, 
uh, but I got asked to come sing at a Christmas choir, then I got asked to be in the choir, then I got asked to play guitar, so now I'm playing guitar and singing in this really great church band. Uh, I don't listen to the sermons too much, but and I, why am I even there? I don't even know why I'm there, uh, but I'm singing my heart out, and there's lots of people that like me, and they're just like, they're, they're, they tell me that I move them uh, into tears when I sing. I don't know. I'm not a great. Thing. I don't. I don't know what, why this is happening, and I never made it. I made. A, never made a choice. I never made an activism choice. Like I'm going to go to this church and I'm going to sing for these people. I'm going to open their hearts. <laughs> right? I don't. I didn't. I just. I'm just there. Okay. And uh, and that's the. The, the beauty of um, getting in touch with your awareness and your presence is because then you're just there. <laughs> you know, someone says, you know, uh, I, I, I'd like to meet you for a coffee, I'd like to meet you for tea, and you go there with zero agenda. You know, you just forget about any ideas about what, you, what you're going to talk about. Or, or what you want to get, you know, or anything like that. You just show up, because then you get to have actually, you know, have the experience. And I think I think part of being an activist is, uh, uh, if you want to use that word, is being an extremely good listener. And that is one of the, I think, one of the most beautiful gifts of becoming a meditator is you learn to listen because part of being part of meditating is listening to your own bloody head and you learn to listen to your own crazy thoughts like you can learn to be quiet while your own head is going off you can then be quiet while someone else's head is going off in front of you and and not have to judge it just like you don't have to judge your own insane barrage that may be the ins insane parade of thoughts you don't have to judge them someone's in front of you and they're, and they're like okay I'll, I'll even say this sometimes I'll go and I'll have meetings with people and the first half an hour is just them decompressing that's the first 30 minutes I just get a conversation going and then they just go off for a while and uh, listen and just there and then eventually everything gets quiet and eventually they calm down and eventually there's a, a real connection there and then we have a moment and that one moment that we have is worth it that beautiful moment of two people being present is worth waiting for because that's everything that's everything that's beautiful in life is that and that's worth waiting for and if if you can't have it in yourself then it's going to be very difficult to have that with somebody else because uh, you will jump on their thought train right and then it will be like this little battle goes, dip, 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 dip. and while they're talking you're thinking of what you're going to say next and then and then you come out with it, bang, you get in there. <laughs> right? Maybe maybe they're one of those people that there's no gap and you're like waiting. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And you boom, you get in there and it's your turn, you blah, 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 blah. you know, and then it's like an hour goes by and you people go home and you're like, whoops. <laughs> 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 like I feel like I'm drunk from that. <laughs> you know. But you you know, but yeah, you can just be uh, anywhere at a party, anywhere. Someone's talking about who knows what, doesn't matter, and you're just there listening and present and eventually the chatter will wind down and then you can have a heart to heart connection with someone else. Everybody wants that. Some of us are afraid of it. Some of us aren't. I think that's why singing is so beautiful. It's because we're expressing, right? But we're expressing uh, something that's within us, hopefully. Um, and then people 
can respond to that and simply be there, be with that. Well, the time let's do a little short meditation to finish. noticing as you turn inward what the mind is seeing or hearing what sort of thoughts and it may just be like an echo echo of the thoughts or the And notice if it feels like those thoughts are in between you and the present moment. And how you can notice that is simply start to think about the room that you're in, the sounds that you're hearing. body in the room, how your body is feeling, you can do this kind of thing any time of day as a very quick rejuvenation of your awareness. because we often don't notice that our minds have speeded up and are moving from left to right, up and down, frantically. And we're missing the moment. And that our presence is enough. We, we are enough. We don't have to become anything. We can choose to, if we want to go that route. But we're fine the way that we are. A natural, aware, present state doesn't need anything. So if you simply tune in to the sounds you're hearing, just notice them. And you remove that pesky mind by not analyzing the sound, not getting involved with the sound not needing to understand the sound, that takes away from the whole experience of actually having the full aware experience of the moment. The analytical overlay takes us into the past or into the future 
us away from the richness of the moment. Take long. And tune in like that. So now, to finish off a, the class and to finish off this little meditation, just think of the many people that you see on a daily basis, people you know, people you don't know. And just think that the deepest silent place that you've reached within yourself is also within them. And if you haven't reached your deepest, most silent still place, then there's somewhere deeper to go. And that within everyone else, there's somewhere deeper that you can see if you get deeper within yourself and you can be with So for a moment or two, with this expanded awareness, this feeling in your heart, just see the, the deep, still love, compassion that is within every being. And as you look at these beings that you know, don't know, Relate to them on that level. And as you do, maybe you'll notice what happens within your own mind and your body as you do that. Do you notice a shift? And then in your mind, wish them all well. Decide that by the power of your intention to come here tonight and to stay here through the class and be present and meditate, by the power of that may everyone be free of confusion, free. May they know their own inner presence. May they know it dearly and close and well. And a strong wish. Feel it in your heart. You're wishing hard for it. And you see a light burst out of you and connect with them like that. And then the light withdraws back into your heart. You feel the soft glow in your heart. And thank you all for being here tonight. Be together. See you next week, maybe.
Thank you, Joyce, for setting up the And if you, uh, Joyce is our internet, she's the captain of our internet sea. So if you want to be, uh, she can send you links to like SoundCloud links, because all these classes have been recorded on SoundCloud. And so and Joyce is there to keep the kingdom there. <laughs> if you want to be in the mailing list. Yeah, right. And I don't know if anybody has been, I'm going to do a, like a, almost a full day teaching in September. I think people got that email, you know, because that should be fun. Fines? What's that? Fines? Yeah. It'd be fun. No, oh, it'll be good. It'll be, I mean, I don't know. But uh, it, it would be great to be together and explore. I'm going to be praying you and on Friday, no? You'll be oh yes, on Friday. that's right. The the Jack Brule concert. That's right. Oh, I didn't send my permission.